So these washing machine motors are great because they're high power and easy to find in old washing machines on the side of the road. Um, but they can be pretty complicated to wire, so we're just going to talk about the different wiring of these washing machine motors. Can we find one in a new washing machine? Uh, yeah, so the new washing machines uh, usually have three phase motors and they're computer controlled. So they're going to be really complicated to set up. So these older ones are better. So if you find a old washing machine on the side of the road, you'll probably find a nice half horsepower motor that you can use for any of your projects. So um, these usually have quite a few wires. That's because um, they have two windings, a high speed and a low speed. And the high speed is going to be much more powerful. You're going to want to use that for most of your projects. Um, the high speed windings on this motor are the blue and white. So you connect house black to blue on the motor and house white to white on the motor. And then also these motors have a starter circuit that goes through a capacitor. So I have the capacitor on the side here and that just makes the power a little bit out of phase to help the motor start. Um, so you're going to have to have two uh, wirings coming from the house. I have mine wired through just a three-way splitter for now, but you could also more permanently solder something together. And so this gray wire uh, comes from the splitter into the capacitor. House black goes into the capacitor and into red. How concerned with the ground should we be? So uh, you, you just want to ground the motor here and um, ideally nothing should be uh, connected to ground if you wire everything correctly. If you have a ground fault interrupter that will easily tell you if you did anything wrong. Um, with these capacitors you're going to want to be careful if you uh, if, if for instance if I were to unplug both of these and plug this in. One of those connecting to the capacitor and one of those connecting to the motor. Yeah, so this is the one that's connected to the capacitor. So if I connect this, it'll start the motor because that's the start winding. Or actually, it'll start it if I give it a spin. Um, but now the capacitor is charged and the terminals of this are charged. So, I'm just so we should be careful. So you be very careful because this is charged with the capacitor up to potentially like 170 volts. So I'm going to discharge that just on the metal frame. So it also depends if you unplug it at the right time, it could not have any charge. Yeah. It was just a little spark. So that I felt that a little bit through the... Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's why I keep, I keep both of these plugged into the splitter. And what that does is that allows the capacitor... So now the splitter is energized. But if I plug this in, it allows that capacitor to just discharge through the regular windings in this black wire. So uh, just one more time how I have it wired. Um, I have house black to blue house white to white, house black through the capacitor to orange, or excuse me, to red. Does it matter which direction we have this capacitor set up? Uh, no, it doesn't. These capacitors aren't um, polarized. So you, since the AC is going both directions, you can hook it up with either terminals. Um, and then house, uh, for the capacitor circuit, I also have house white connected to yellow. So one more time for the starter circuit, house white connected to yellow, house black through the capacitor to red. And if you wanted, uh, so I'll just go ahead and show you how that's going to work. Just plug it in and the motor pops right off. Um, now you can also start these without the starter capacitor. So for example, if I unplug the gray and just leave the black plugged in. now. Um, all I have hooked up is house white to white and house black to blue. I can go ahead and plug it in and it won't do anything, but if I give it a spin, it'll catch right up. Now so the capacitor just uh, skips this step of manual starting. Yeah, exactly. So if you have it attached to something, you don't have to manually pull the motor every time you want to get it started. Um, so I'm going to hook that back up. Now, so you can also do... Um, run these at a lower RPM. I think this motor is about 1800 RPM and 1100 RPM, depending on which windings you have hooked up. And so again, the high speed was white and blue, but if I wanted to hook it up with the low speed, I could connect this to purple, black to purple, and then white to black with the white stripe. And now when I plug this in, it'll run at a lower speed.
And then finally, if you want to switch directions for either of the uh, either the low speed or high speed winding, you just have to reverse the polarity of either the capac the, the starter circuit or the non capacitor circuit. So, for example, if I just take these and connect black to white and black and white to purple, just reverse the uh, polarity from the way I had it running last time. Now if I connect this, it'll run with low speed windings in the other direction. And that works with the high speed winding too. Now, um, is there anything special that happens if we swap both of them? Uh, no, that will just make it run the same direction. So if I swapped the capacitor, both, both the starter circuit with the capacitor polarity and the uh, polarity of the regular run circuit, the, the motor would just turn in the same direction. Um, also, if you have, uh, I just want to address some how I figured this out in case you have a motor that's wired just a little bit differently. So you're probably going to need the uh, capacitor for the starter circuit and the coloring should be the same, but just in case I want to run through how you can figure that out on your own if you have a different motor. And I'm just trying to find... And especially if you have a, a one with the labels that are a little bit busted. Yeah. Where did I put that multimeter? I will be right back with the multimeter. <laughs> I think you picked up. Ah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> so the best way to kind of get a handle of what's going on is if you take a multimeter, the windings will have a resistance of in the single digits or low double digit ohms. So I have it just set to 200 and it'll beep because it's a continuity setting. But so example, that white and blue is the high speed winding. If I kind of get out of the way and connect it, it'll beep showing it's there is a connection. And also, it's about one and a half to two ohms. This is a really cheap multimeter, so it's probably not too accurate. But the point is that that's a low resistance winding. The high speed is the lowest resistance winding in the neighborhood of a couple of ohms. The the, low, the high speed winding, I don't know what I said. But the low speed winding will be also pretty low, but a few ohms higher, like on this motor, it's about three ohms. And then finally, the start windings, for example, on my motor, I use red and yellow, will be continuous, but with an even higher resistance. If I got a good connection, it's about eight or nine ohms. So that's how you can find the start winding. Um, and the other way you can figure out the start winding is if you have a box similar to this one on your machine, just unscrew that ground terminal. And this just kind of grounds the chassis to the electrical ground. And you can take this little plate off, or you can break it depending on how old it is. And you can see inside, there's this switch that makes the electrical connections. And what this does is um, the orange will be, or the red will be connected to black, which is the only connection that this, or that the uh, red terminal has to the motor. You know, if there's no wires, there's no red wire going to the windings of the motor. So what's actually happening when you connect the um, starter circuit to red is that internally there's a switch that brings it over to black. And what this does is when the RPM gets high enough, it actually will cut off the starter capacitor circuit so that all of the power is going through the regular run windings, not the start winding. And this is just another way, so if you take it apart and you can kind of see where the connections are going, you can figure out how the start circuit is wired and therefore figure out how to run your motor. And that's if uh, we can't tell from either the box or the our, our color our color wires are a little bit different. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if the, if the colors are a little bit different than this one, you can just figure it out 
on your own, but how I have this one set up should work if you have the same color wires. And uh, that's all. Thank you.